So here I'm going to show you how to use ASR review to do a rack and stack of your literature review to help you figure out what to read first because you're going to have a lot of literature. So here we're going to load up ASR review. It's going to require that you have Python. I'm not going to load Py I'm not going to show you how to load Python here, but I'll, I have a link that'll show you how to do it. So here I'm just pulling it up. Um, so just press the I believe button for this part. I'm just following the instructions as they were provided in the website. What this does was is load ASR review in a browser. So you do not have to do any coding in order to uh, do this, but you will have to have Python. So right now it's loading up and it's loading into my browser. And I already have used this before, so you can see that here. And we're going to create a new project. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. So it's gonna walk you through it. You can see you have the user interface. It's gonna need a title for the project. You can put an author there. That's not required a description if you want to. Now you're gonna need data. So your data set is your um, file of all of your literature. So remember when I was talking about using a reference manager to store all of the references that you find. So here I'm using Mendeley. So I'm going to export a, in this case, I'm going to pull out an RIS file that is a compendium of all of the data about all of the references I have. Now I have a bunch of references from a bunch of different projects on here. And you can see I've done a couple of them before, so it just exports out. All the different reference managers can do this uh, in fairly similar ways. So then you either select the file or drag it right into that window. The more references you have, the better this tool will work. Because remember, it's using machine learning to figure out what are the relevant references. And that's how it's going to figure out what you should read first. So you can either ask it to find random ones and select those, uh, tagging them as either relevant or irrelevant, or you can put in some keywords. So I'm going to put in a keyword. Um, so I'm going to try to say that all of the references that are related to STEM are relevant. And so I'm just going through as it's pulling out, it's finding the references. And you can see if abstracts were loaded in with the reference, which I recommend that you do that for this purpose in particular, but also because it'll help you refresh your memory when you're trying to think about what that paper was. As you get more and more papers, it will become hard to keep them straight. You start selecting, yes, this is relevant, or no, this isn't relevant. So what that's doing is it's training the software to look for key characteristics that either match or don't match those relevant tagged references. And the more you do this, the more you train it, the better it gets. So it'll either by that standard find more relevant um, references within your list of uh, all of your literature, or it'll find less. So here I found, looks like about six. I feel like that's good. It's a good place to start. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a different keyword, ASTM, because I know that those are going to be completely irrelevant to this particular topic. So I'm going to tag those. Then I know those come from a, a different project. So I'm going to tag those as no. And that's going to help it find the ones that are relevant and the ones that are not relevant. So you might see some duplicates in here. So that's something that you should, whenever possible, clear up your duplications. You will end up getting duplications. It's just inevitable. 
um, clearing up your duplicate references will just make your life easier. So now we can close that. So we've loaded our data set. We've given it some initial tags to help train it. And now it's going to think some thoughts. So we're going to click next here. So now it's going to allow you to make some modifications if you want to how the machine learning algorithms classify the remainder of your literature based on the training you've done uh, and how it will do that moving forward. So if you know that you like um, one of these particular classifiers better, you can use them. I personally just leave it at the default setting. So we're going to go ahead and click next. And now it's using your initial training to do an initial scrub of the data that you have of your literature review. So here we can click on start reviewing and then do additional training based on the results that it's provided because it could be wrong. It could have tagged something as relevant and we find, you know what, it's not relevant. So we'll change that tag. But for the purposes of this, we're just going to leave these as relevant. We're not going to change any of them. But here's where you could go in and it's important to go through and see, okay, in this first five or 10 or 20, results, did it get anything wrong? And here's again where it helps to see your abstracts because it becomes much easier for you in addition to having the title to be able to kind of make that assessment. And then you can see how many records you have, how many have actually been labeled, how many were labeled relevant, um, some analytics about it. So now we're going to go through and export our data set. And you can export the whole data set, only your relevant tagged um, literature, or you can download the whole project, which includes all of those analytics, um, which can be helpful if you're doing something called a systemic um, or systematic review. And there's a multiple different ways in which you can um, export it. You can do it as an RIS, an Excel, a CSV, or a TSV. So if you export it as an RIS, you can then import it back into your reference manager and then have that as a very specific file of this is my relevant list of literature. So it becomes something useful for you to use. And then you get all of that metadata back. So then you can go in, click your link from your URL, et cetera, to go start doing your review based on the literature list that you have. So I'm going to show you how you can now import that RIS file with your only your relevant list of literature. So here we're loading in the RIS file that I just exported from AS Review. It's going to load in one RIS file. And as you'll see, once I load it in, it's going to have 32 references associated with it. Those are the 32 references that AS Review found were relevant based on the tagging and the training that I did. So now instead of 866 references to read, I have only 32 references to read. So that becomes a lot easier and a lot more manageable. So as you go through, you're reading these references, they'll drive you to more references and more, in all likelihood. You can find more relevant information, go back and do an iterative process of retraining the data to again, always find the most relevant stuff. I hope this helps tackle your literature review.